So hi everyone, thanks for a kind introduction and thanks for having me here. So um, we all needed a reason to wake up today and gather here. Mine was to share some of my thoughts with you. And I hope that it can maybe awaken something in you. So um, what matters? Two words, an easy question to ask, but a really difficult one to answer. I ask people I love the most and I care about the most for their answers. Well, I was actually quite surprised how different the answers were. Family, the one we came from, but also the one we create. Health, in general. Friends and family being healthy. Respect for yourself, your own happiness. Prioritize what is important for you. Having people around you that helps you to stay sane. Um, the, my, my favorite one was, can you just please stop asking these weird questions, you scare me. Well, this was an answer too. And fr from some people, I've never got the answer. So it's actually really hard when you think about it from your point of view. I'm a neuroscientist. I'm working with spinal cord injured patients. Well, I'm doing the basic research, but of course I met the patients and I talked to them. And for these patients, when you ask them, what is the most important for your recovery? Well, not surprisingly, they want to regain the ability to walk again, followed by regaining erection and bladder control. So this is how my project started. Someone approached patients and asked them, what is the most important for your recovery? And this is how we started. This is how we started working on the sensory, uh, the regener regeneration of the sensory pathways after spinal cord injury. Well, the project was quite successful. It's actually amazing. I need to touch the wood that we are going to continue and we might, forward, we might move forward in the future. But I'm not here to talk about science. My topic is not that positive to be shared, and it's not really my topic. I'm just trying to help the patients while doing the basic research. So, um, but when you think about the question, what did men for them, what it mean for them, and what this question actually means to you, you can see the difference. And I bet that you are not thinking about something that important, as is the sensation. Well, um, but from my personal point of view, I think that this answer, what we all have, is actually changing as we change and as we evolve along with it. You might agree, you might not. I hope you will. And the project itself was successful, but what did it mean to me? Because every single success costs something. And for me, the price I had to pay was time I was away, time I was not present here, and time I was not spending with my family, with friends, and being here for the important moments in their lives. It was sad. I've traveled like 15 countries approximately the last three years, just changing places, spending a lot of time abroad on the road. It was not easy but I would never trade this life for anything else because it gave me something what I'll mention, the perspective. The perspective of what is really important and it's really hard to decide what means to you when you actually know so little about the world around you and when you are not really meeting people from different fields, from different, um, with different stories and people are willing to share it. So when I was a little girl, I remember I wanted to travel so much and we always traveled with my parents. And I think that there was always some kind of restlessness in me. And I always had this primal fear of falling prey to boredom and routine. So this is actually why I chose PhD and not making money in the company. I decided to keep moving learning new things, changing places, meeting new people. I chose this and I don't regret. And I think that what matters, and when you really want to discover what matters to you, it's taking the risk. 
And taking the risk means overcoming all the fears you have, all of them. There are opportunities just flying around us everywhere. And we just need to say the heartiest to what we feel that it might push us somewhere else. We need to willingly choose the situation that, are not, that we are not that comfortable with, I would say. And just imagine that we have the imaginary mirror and we just see our reflection in it. But when you choose something you are not really that sure about, you are willingly choosing to be prepared to not see the same person in a few days, weeks, months, years. You are willingly choosing to change. And I think that you can feel this. You can feel that your life is changing every single day. Any experience you have pushed you somewhere else. And when you look back to your high school, when, what you, when like the biggest stressor was the graduation from high school, now it's probably something else, at least I hope. For someone, it can be still the high school graduation, but what they were experiencing last year was just something different, maybe just you know, applying for high school. It's changing and we are moving forward. And all these discoveries are amazing and it's scary and I know it. But when there is an opportunity that comes, please don't listen to this little tiny voice you have in your head, because I promise you'll have it. The voice that tells you, don't do it. You won't make it. It's not a good idea. You are going to be judged. You are going to lose people. Well, you might. I can't promise that you won't. But it's really worth it. You are, right. you are actually not in. Thanks. <laughs> well, um, this little voice, all the scenarios you have run in through, th through your hat, they hear, they won't disappear. It's a protective mechanism because we want to rely on what is certain in our lives. This is what we know. But if you want to really experience something unreal, you need to allow yourself to move from this amazing comfort zone. I hate this expression, step out of your comfort zone. Well, it doesn't really work like this, but it actually works, this expression, in this moment. You also know probably the yellow car paradox. You know, the feeling when you want to buy a yellow car, and then immediately afterwards, you just see the yellow car everywhere. Everywhere, everyone has it now. Even before there was no one with a yellow car around you. Why? Because your brain is actually deciding what we are paying the attention to. So then we are more focused on the like signs. Why not to take this opportunity? Because there was a sign and I saw it and it said no. The sign was always there. You're just now paying the attention to it. This is how your brain works. It's actually messing up, messing a bit with you. It's actually playing a game with you. Um, also, then you are trying to read horoscopes to look for an answer. You know, it like, okay, should I take this job? Should I apply? Should I book this trip? Should I ask someone to go out? I say do it. Horoscope would be like, well, every single Taurus walking on this planet is, is going to win a lottery next Tuesday. Probably not. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm Taurus, I know it. Um, so, and then you keep asking people around you, and you are looking for this like anchor. You are looking for someone to give you the solution. Don't do it. Don't look for a solution for your situation from someone else. Because, to be honest, they're not you. They can know your story. They can know what you've experienced and what you have behind you. But they don't know you. They are not you. They have experienced different things. They are affected by different uh, situations that happened to them. So, don't do it, really. But what I can advise you, 
and it helped me a lot to get where I am. Well, it sounds so posh. I'm just here at Charles University and I'm a proud PhD student. But I got amazing opportunities just because I was able to say yes, even though I had a lot of doubts. And I have them still. Now I'm actually thinking about moving to the US and I've never wanted to live in the US. But I think that this is the right way and I'm scared. And I am exposed here to you, I'm scared. But I still think that it's worth it and I will do it and I will always choose the hard way because this is the way where I actually know myself and I meet myself and I'll become the best version of myself. And I know goodbyes are always hard, always. And it doesn't have to be the goodbye that, bye, I'm leaving Prague and I'll never come back. It doesn't work this way. Any goodbye is hard. When you leave in job, when you leave in relationship, when you leave in country, town, when you leave in a friend that you just see after months and you just need to say bye at the train station, it's always hard because it was something that you were experiencing and you are just going to make another step to something you don't know. It's always hard. It's always hard to leave stuff behind, but it's worthy. And there is um, this thing, when you really want to experience something extraordinary, you cannot play it safe. You need to take this risk. And sometimes it can actually turn out that it's not working, but it will always give you something that playing it safe would never give you. So, This is it. Do it. Whatever it is for you, do it. Decide. Take this as an encouragement for you to actually experience something special. Do it, whatever it is. And I really thank you for your time, that you actually came here to listen to me. I was more like a motivational speaker than anything else, but it's really worthy. Thank you.